I'm Mike Hanawald, field agronomist with Bex Hybrids, and I wanted to do a quick reminder video today uh, for post-herbicide applications in soybeans. So um, we're approaching that time in summer when a lot of sprayers will be making their way across bean fields. And, and this year, with some of the challenges with product availability and then some of the changes in costs of products, um, we've had quite a few farmers who have uh, made some changes to their traditional herbicide programs. And, uh, and so because of that, we've had quite a few questions about um, which soybean trait platforms um, are tolerant to which herbicides. And so um, I hope this is review for uh, most of you, but wanted to uh, just kind of go over that information and, and make sure that we can hopefully avoid uh, some potential issues with that. So um, first of all, we'll start out with the Enlist E3 platform. So um, these soybeans are tolerant to uh, glyphosate, so Roundup, uh, glufosinate, which would be Liberty, and then the 2,4-D choline formulation of 2,4-D, which is um, which what is contained in the Enlist herbicide. So um, those are the three herbicides you're tolerant to uh, with Enlist. And on Bex varieties, that's indicated with an E3 designation after the variety number. So for example, a 30-30 E3. Uh, moving on to the Extend Flex platform, um, so that would be the XF uh, designation. So like a 3555 XF would be the variety that you'd see from Bex. And so that's the Extend Flex, which provides you tolerance to glyphosate and glufosinate, Roundup and Liberty, um, just like the Enlist platform. But the different part it is, is that those beans are tolerant to the approved Dicamba formulations. So that would be like Extendamax and Ingenia. And even though 2,4-D and dicamba, they're both growth regulator herbicides and they kill weeds in a similar way, they are distinct herbicides and they are not interchangeable when it comes to these technologies. So the Enlist soybeans are tolerant to 2,4-D and the Extend Flex soybeans are tolerant to, to dicamba. Uh, moving on, we still sell a few uh, of the Roundup Ready 2 Extend lineup. Um, so also some people call them the straight extend soybeans. And so they give you tolerance to glyphosate, so Roundup, and then also the approved dicamba formulations like Extendamax and Ingenia. Uh, one other quick comment on the Extendamax and Ingenia is that in the state of Ohio, we are um, have a deadline approaching to us very quickly on June 30th um, is the last day that those, those herbicides can be applied um, post to our soybeans. Uh, moving on, we also sell the uh, Liberty Link GT27, also known as the Freedom Plus lineup. Those are tolerant to glyphosate as uh, well as glufosinate, so Roundup and Liberty in the, the post um, option for that. And those are designated with the FP uh, designation, so like a 3546 FP uh, would be an example of a variety number with uh, Freedom Plus. And then of course we have um, the non-GMO lineup as well. And so you can see there on your screen a summary of all the different um, lineups that we offer and then uh, the herbicides that those are tolerant to. So it's a good idea to just double check and uh, double check for your own records. And if you have someone custom applying herbicides on your field, um, just make sure you double check with that custom applicator that they're putting the right herbicide on the right field uh, so that we don't end up uh, having to um, replant a field of beans that might have been uh, might have been uh, accidentally killed off. So um, also wanted to just give uh, two quick reminders on um, making the most of that post herbicide pass. So um, a lot of us are continuing to spray Liberty and uh, Liberty unfortunately is significantly more expensive than what it's been in the past. And so we really wanna make sure that that one pass of Liberty is as, as effective as possible. And so there's five things that are really keys uh, to being successful with the Liberty program. Um, we've talked about these in the past, but just wanted to review them. So uh, number one, um, is uh, spraying 20 gallons of water. Um, that's really important to get good coverage of the weeds so that you get a good kill. And um, in our PFR data, um, we have shown um, a significant improvement in uh, weed control by spraying 20 gallons versus 15. So definitely worth taking a little bit extra time and filling a little bit more often to get 20 gallons. Um, Number two, using the right type of nozzles, again, to maximize the coverage. And so using a true flat fan nozzle, or even better, a dual flat fan nozzle, and spray out in different directions um, to target those weeds and get, get good coverage. Um, number three, we wanna add a grass killer. Liberty isn't necessarily bad at killing grass, but compared to what we're used to with Roundup, um, Liberty needs a little bit of help. So Clethodim is a great option because that gets your volunteer corn, but you can also tank mix Roundup and Liberty as well. Um, number four is the time of day that we're going out in the field to spray. We want to wait until the dew uh, dries off in the evening or in the morning, um, but then we want to be uh, quit spraying by about 7 p.m. or two hours before sunset so that we make sure um, that we hit those weeds when they're actively growing. And finally, number five is to use a good solid dry AMS source. We've seen a pretty good advantage to using a true AMS, um, either a dry AMS or a, a true liquid AMS, as opposed to an AMS replacement product. 
product. Um, we've seen good, good benefits to that with Liberty herbicides. Those AMS replacers can work well with other herbicides, um, but with Liberty, it's really important to use a, a true uh, dry AMS. Um, and then the last point I want to make is um, looking at a um, res residual herbicide applied post, an in-season residual. Um, if we're dealing with beans like you see behind me, these were planted on May 13th and they are um, pretty well canopied being 15 inch beans. It's probably not as important to have that in season residual because we're gonna have good canopy and, and hopefully good weed control um, by being shaded out by the, the soybean canopy. But the beans that you see in front of me, these were planted June 6th and there were quite a few June planted beans in Ohio, unfortunately this spring um, because of the, the challenging weather that we had. Um, and so if you have beans that you need to spray to get the weeds under control, but you don't have a good canopy or you're not really close to canopy. Adding that residual in season um, can help to keep that field clean so you can get by with just one pass of herbicide post. Um, our PFR data has shown a 6% increase in control at harvest time by adding that residual herbicide. And uh, while 6% doesn't seem like much, um, our PFR team has done the math and the calculations. And if you have some water hemp in the field um, or some water hemp pressure, um, it can actually reduce your water hemp population or water hemp seed production by 17.1 million seeds per acre. Um, that is really significant and will make a difference, not just for this year, but for the amount of weed pressure that you'll see in the future. And so uh, something to consider there as well. If you have any questions about this or any other agronomic topic, feel free to reach out to myself or your local BEX representative and we would be happy to help you. Thanks a lot. Thank you.